Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Biconics Wrestling Podcast, part of Vibe Tribe Productions. We're here looking at SmackDown from just the other night, which was 617, 16, 616. <laughs> it was Friday, recently. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. This is taped, so, you know, it, it may or may not have happened. Hopefully you enjoyed that time. We have a lot of stuff to talk about for SmackDown. This is the long-form segment, so we're just riff and rant a little bit. If you're interested in the Beat the Clock segment... You've probably seen that also on there. Check that out if you just want a quick recap. I'm joined with Minnie and Mikey, also from Vibe Tribe. How are you guys doing? Trying to catch a Pokemon to Pokemon Go. <laughs> That's fair. You never know when those things are going to pop up. What'd you catch? I'm trying to get the Whopper, but the problem is I can't use it one hand apparently because I've missed about 17 Pokeballs in a row. <laughs> and it just popped out. This motherfucker. Why is he in your room? Like, you weren't... I don't know. I just saw a Whopper. I opened it up because I was like, I got to put some eggs in my thing because I'm trying to hatch some eggs. But I was like, oh, a Whopper. Cool. I'll catch it. And 19 Pokeballs, two berries, and an Ultra Ball later. Oh, man. That cleaned you out. Wow, this motherfucker was hard to catch. That's terrible. This would be at least a three-star. At least it's a three-star. We're good. That's a shame. Austin Creed would be proud that you dedicated time to just catch that thing out of nowhere. We're off to such a great start. (laughs) As I'm sitting here dying of laughter. (laughs) Mikey's falling apart over there. This is exactly what I expected from me and John. Mikey is on all the podcasts practically here at Vibe Tribe, but but Mikey had some thoughts and comments about SmackDown from the other night, so Mikey wanted to jump on. And we're happy to have Mikey, because Mikey is the father of all of us. (laughs) Let me rephrase that. The father of Vibe Tribe. That could have gotten weird really quickly. Um, Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I'm the tech person for this the review, but I'm going to interject my thoughts and feelings because this week Ooh. was interesting on SmackDown, to say you the least. Opinion. If you're going to pick one to jump in on, this is the one to, to have opinions about. I had so, and so many questions. And and so many questions. One thing I want to say, and Raw kind of does this to me a little bit, but SmackDown is notorious for this and it drives me nuts. And I checked this out because... I can't watch it live. Why? Because there's 20 to 30 minutes in between matches with commercials and promos and what happened last week. And I know you already saw this. Let me show you again. Commercial. And it's, and I don't want to sound like that old guy that's like, commercials are ruining everything. Yeah. And I remember YouTube before ads showed up. But it's hard to watch sometimes because it's, here's a four minute match. And now 30 minutes of stuff you don't care about. It's for the audience. I watched SmackDown at one in the morning last night, and it we did SmackDown watching very easy. When I was like, "Here's the last week's stuff to have with, with the bloodline," like, I don't care. Skip. Exactly. Skip, <laughs> skip to the matches, please. Come on. Okay, good. Because if you've been watching, I don't care I about. Don't, I don't need it. Come on. But and I know they they got to fill a two and a half hour block. I get it, but you're also cutting. You're putting commercials in the middle of matches. We'll be right back. But you just start. Okay. Oh, here's a commercial for a Whopper Jr. at Burger King. What's the Burger King new jingle go? Okay. Wait, 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 let's, I don't care, man. I want to watch Selena Vega versus EO Sky. I, spe- we have to talk about that. Speaking I, of matches, though, but it, it started I, with the Tag Team Gauntlet match, though. But yeah, Tag Team Gauntlet match, which... I thought it was funny because, like, three of the five tag teams were already out by the time SmackDown started. <laughs> we only saw the Street Profits and the Brawling Brutes come out. The other three were just chilling there, and I was like, I, f- I just saw the Street Profits come out. I was like, okay, cool. So we're getting either, like, a tag team segment or, oh, no, it's a gauntlet match. I, Where are I, the- Oh, the team's already there. Oh. I, I might have ruined the Street Profits for my son because my son walked in and goes, why are all the cups on the floor? I was like, what do you mean? The cups are on the floor. Oh, they're cups. They're on the floor. It's like, oh, they're having a birthday. Yeah, they like to party. So they're having a birthday party. So they throw the cups everywhere like it's a party. So now in his head, next time he's at a birthday, he's going to throw cups everywhere. <laughs> oh, no. I, okay. I have a few thoughts on this gauntlet thing. I, I love the concept of the gauntlet. I love that all the teams are there. I love that all Havoc is breaking loose. We already knew the ending. We knew going in it was pretty deadly. At least in my head, I was like, it's going to be pretty deadly. You're giving me hope it's going to be Seamus and Fridge running the table. Because that would have been incredible. I I wouldn't have been surprised because we've seen stuff like that before. Like when Kofi was going for his big belt. Sure. He ran ran a gauntlet and we were like, no, he's going to lose. Come on. But no, it was, I thought the Broly Brutes were going to take it. It sucks that, I think it should have ended with Street Profits. But the Broly Brutes had in there. And poor Hit Row. 
That was such a squash. They got buried. So row, and then, unfortunately, the Good Brothers also got pretty buried in there. Yeah, I... <clears throat> And Mikey might have an opinion on this. <laughs> why, did, why did the brown people get pinned so fast? So let's like, talk. Yes. So the is right in the middle of the gauntlet just the, the, killed all the momentum right in the middle. Of the that. best way I could describe this gauntlet match is it's like a reverse sandwich, right? <laughs> so usually you have the two pieces of bread and then you have the meaty stuff in between. You put the, but white, this, you put the white bread in the middle and then all the good shit on top. This is what I'm saying. So. Let's go in order real quick. So this gauntlet match began with the Street Profits versus the Brawling Boots. So like at the top of this reverse Uno sandwich, if you mind, you have the good chunk of meat right there because those are two tag teams that I oh, yeah. would be happy to see fight. And then, of course, yeah, yeah. So then the Brawling Brutes ended up winning. And then the next three matches after that were the is the bread part in this reverse sandwich because it, I love all the tag teams. I personally like Hit Row. It's just they're always getting squashed and buried. But the Brawling Brutes beat the Street Profits. Then the second part of this match is Brawling Brutes versus the Good Brothers. That ended pretty quickly as well. Then after that, LWO comes in. Didn't stand a chance and it made me upset. Then after that, Brawling Brutes just squash Hit Row. And then we get to the other good meaty part of this match, which was pretty deadly in the Brawling Brutes with pretty deadly picking up the sneaky win. So I I love Brawling Brutes. I think they're fantastic. I felt like they it gave us so much hope that they were going to run this gauntlet. Oh, this was going to be amazing. This was going to be fantastic. I really wanted to see the Street Profits go a little bit longer because I'll watch them all day, every day, oh, all I the time. I love I'll the just Profits. sit there all day like, you're here. Everything's fixed. I don't know anything about the Good Brothers and this OC, the OC. Is that what they're calling themselves? The yeah. yeah, they were part of the OG Bullet Club with, with AJ Styles and everything. And From the days of New Japan, yeah. yeah. New Japan, New I Japan have, faction and everything. I'm so confused by how they're using AJ Styles, but we'll talk about that in a minute or two. I watched Street Profits all day. I'm confused by the OC, the Good Brothers. Everything got squashed. But I have to say, Pretty Deadly are really good at being that 1980s gorgeous glam heels. Like, they're perfect right now. Oh, they did a great. I love their we'll keep, and we'll keep pop partying even longer. That was so <laughs> funny so, to me. I was laughing because the crowd was not behind it. The crowd was dead as Kevin Owens and Sam were trying to shoot that promo. That was but funny. I, I love KO right now. His whole "I'm tired of like old wrestling gimmicks. I'm just going to be an angry man." That was love hilarious. It. I think the more he can go Brian Pillman, I think the better. I think the more Kevin can break that fourth wall down and start calling shit out. Now that WWE and wrestling in general has taken twenty years to rebuild the fourth wall after the Attitude Era, I would love to see Kevin Owens just knock some sense out of that fourth wall, have fun with it. Him and Sammy are right there playing that. Sammy does too. A little bit, yeah. Sammy is so over still right now. I mean, the crowd has yeah. really, he's giving a Seth Rollins treatment because the crowd's singing his entrance when he comes out and he's beaming like a small child, and it's awesome to see it. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, pretty deadly wins. I will say there's a moment where it's the Brawling Brutes and Sheamus, and LWO comes in, and you just see Sheamus take this huge breath and go, Oh, God. And he's just gassed. <laughs> he's been in the ring for 20 minutes up until that point. Comes out, takes a breather, comes back, gets a second or third or fourth wind, and then jumps in there and smokes pretty deadly. Did um, was that a debut? Was that when Fridge hit like that new move that he was working on? Is that the first time he's popped out a finisher? I think so. Mikey would know better. I think <laughs> I, I saw the Michael Cole said that was it the first time. Yeah? It looks sick. It looks sick. It looks really cool. Yes. Yeah. So if I remember correctly, I mean we didn't I hi, I'm the NXT person who <laughs> here. Because my introduction to Ridge was in NXT before he got injured. Oof, that was rough. Yeah. And then he was back for a little bit and then got called up to main roster. But Ridge, I'm trying to remember. I don't think he pulled that out in NXT. Granted, he wasn't there that long, but that finisher was phenomenal. <laughs> I gonna, love it. I'm going to yeah. find I it again. It. That finisher I thought was really cool. And then... During this gauntlet match, I'm like sitting here and I'm enjoying the Brawling Brutes just dominating for the majority of this. And then the first question of tonight's episode pops into my head. I'm like, 
Remember when Sheamus and Gunther were in a program and I thought that was going to continue after WrestleMania and then like everything, it got dropped because now they're on yeah. separate brands. I was like, that's sad because the Intercontinental Championship is the only title that Sheamus needs to complete like the whole entire circuit. He has won every mm-hmm. single title in w- main roster WWE except for that Intercontinental Championship. A and- lot of storylines just dropped and dipped, and then we had to figure out what are we going to do with this bloodline thing, and then that has taken over the last few months or so. I don't know. What do you do with Sheamus and Gunther and any of these? Is, the big is Gunther even in any? He, I know he did the little thing with Sammy and KO, but I don't think he's in a IC title. There's been these weird right little now. pockets of stories. That no, last two it's weeks and then disappear. What's happening? I think they're trying to see what sticks right now. I guess, but because Imperium, it's because what is hurting right now is because KO and Sammy are tag team champions. And it's so stupid. They haven't clarified it, but they are still technically (laughs) Raw and SmackDown tag team champions. So I say (laughs) unify the two belts. I was unify the belt, (laughs) unify the tag team belt. So that way it makes sense to go across both. It doesn't make. We'll talk about Roman, too, because when they introduced that new title last week or two weeks ago, whenever that was, I was like, oh, cool. So he's not going to carry his old ones. And then nope, is Roman three belts. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyways, but I also this is just my personal theory. So based on wrestling reports and seeing that I still hate that he's being called Butch, I'm gonna call him P- Mr. Pete Dune, <laughs> Butch. <laughs> Is in the Money in the Bank ladder match. I think because there are reports out there that he's slowly going to be going heel and that he's going to be returning to his Pete Dunn moniker, which I'm here for. I think he's I think they're going to split the brawling brutes up and it's going to be Sheamus and Ridge. And then Butch is going to do his own thing for a little bit, which is sad, but I don't know if brawling brutes was going to be a long term like tag team or faction forever it seems like it's one of those transitional factions that kind of shows up every now and then where it's like we have some characters put them together make them do some stuff even though sometimes those show up to be really cool ah i'm trying to remember if drew got drafted to smackdown or raw because if he's on smackdown then you can continue what happened at wrestlemania between him and sheamus which Give me that right. match every single day. I don't care. I'll watch it all the time. That match, I mean, that was, match gonna... was awesome live because we heard those chops from where the hell up when we were, and it made my chest tingle. I wonder if it was dropped because the McIntyre Sheamus friends feud thing, like the fans didn't buy it. Like maybe that didn't sell leading up to it, or it was don't stand in my way. You don't stand in my way, even though they worked great together. As a tag team leading up to that, I thought they were hilarious and were really funny. It was just two friends beating everybody together. But you're right. I wanted to see this Gunther McIntyre Sheamus thing play out. And then all of a sudden, the Brawling Brutes show up. I'm like, okay, what are you doing? But again, the draft will work against you if it's just rolling the dice, I guess. It also doesn't right. help that Drew hasn't and WWE haven't come to terms on a new deal yet. So. Maybe that's an, I forget that there's still a contract pseudo dispute there, and McIntyre has all the leverage. Oh, would, unless yep. and he's very anti vent so he wants yeah. to stay away from him as possible. Yeah, I did find it. Me. Rich is the new finisher you did. It was a gut wrench into I don't know what this position is called. It's where you're you have the guy on your shoulder and he's on his back on your shoulder, kind of like you're set up a razor's edge, and then he flips okay. him and turns into almost like a execution DDT. Wow. I thought it looked really cool. I just I had to look. I thought it was he did, great. He, he did the LW. I think I looked away for a second and then I saw it and I was like, "What was that? That, that was, was cool. interesting." That one awesome. popped me. I'm like, "Oh, we are getting new move sets. Let's go. We're getting finishers. <laughs> Let's go." Oh, and you excited? This has happened. I think it was on Raw when this happened. But you think Shotzi's going to take you to be able to get to that money in the big match? Actually, yeah. this happened in SmackDown. We'll talk about that in a little bit because this ties what into was right yeah. Right so the ones that I skipped. yeah, so pretty. Right. So the gun- yeah, so pretty else deadly. On the pretty Anything dead. On- the match itself was fine. The beginning and the ending matches were fine. They were okay. They were pretty decent. But then the three matches in between with that involved the squashes, the oh, the Good Brothers, LWO, and Hit Row were just like, eh. like there's only three tag teams in that tag team division that are viable, credible threats to KO and Sammy. And they happen to be the Brawling Brutes, the OC, 
Actually, that's, that's it, because I would say the Street Profits, but right now they're just floundering a little bit. Yeah, they're, they're, they're floating in. They're using them just to get pops from the crowd because Montez Ford is awesome and everybody loves him, but they don't want to use anything for him yet. And the Street Profits are over with the universe. It's just what I'm hoping is that Montez, Angelo and Bianca form their own little stable because we're starting to get shades of NXT heel Bianca coming through, which we'll talk about in her promo against Charlotte on the Grayson Walla effect later. But overall, this gauntlet match was pretty Decent. I did like the, the double beats of the bow drum that he did to Pretty Deadly. So sick. And if, if you pay I'll attention, just... when I don't even know these guys' name, but I don't watch Pretty. I didn't watch Pretty Deadly in NXT. But the blonde one, I don't remember his name. The blonde one, Elton Prince, uh, I think. This they changed their Prince. names. It's so stupid. Okay. The blonde so one when he jumps up, jumps up there to try and save him, and then gets pulled in. Yeah, then he gets pulled into it, and he comes down, and you can see him move because if you look on the bottom of the camera, you see his hair flapping with the camera. <laughs> I saw. I was like, was that his hair? And I had to rewind it a few times. Oh, that was his hair. That's fantastic. Yeah, I thought that was hysterical, too. I love that uh, I keep forgetting his name, the cool British announcer who just owns Michael Cole every time. <laughs> Wade, ba- yes. Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett, uh, Wade Barrett Wade, whatever you want to call him. Wade Barrett, the British fellow who's handsome. Call him Queens and time. say that his toxic masculinity. <laughs> that was so good. Just, Your toxic masculinity is showing. And then he drops a queen reference right in the middle of it. Like, these are killer queens. <laughs> guaranteed to blow your mind right as it gets smashed. Wade Barrett is a national treasure and I love uh, him. <laughs> he's a really yeah, good heel. International treasure. He's not one of ours. <laughs> he is ours now. <laughs> he's ours. <laughs> you don't even need to take the citizenship test. You're great. You're one of us now. Cool. I think we can move on. We talked yeah. a lot about that. Um, KO, come out. We set up the match in London in two weeks. Yeah. Which I'm surprised it's not on the pay-per-view, Sammy, but it makes sense, I guess. It's interesting. Sammy it's interesting. dropped his Go ahead. When they ran to the ring, you can also notice Sammy dropped his raw belt outside the ring. Oh, really? Because he, could, he <laughs> couldn't get the belts off in time. And they cut, it panned out, and you just see the raw belt sitting outside the ring. That's really funny. I, this is an interesting thing that started to happen, and I don't know if this is a new concept or whatever. I don't remember it growing up. That the Going Home show now has a lot of stuff on it. There's a lot of reasons to watch the Raw and SmackDown leading into a pay-per-view. We have tag team matches. We have a belt or two up for grabs before the money in the bank on this match, which is cool because then it gives you something to do at O2 Arena. Like it packs the deck for that weekend. So I understand that. But it's a very interesting. I like, I like it to a degree. It's like I have a reason to watch. And then if I really like SmackDown, I have a reason to watch the money in the bank or whatever else happens. I didn't hate this promo. I wasn't enthralled by it. I like Pretty Deadly and what they're doing. The crowd was not buying. <laughs> it was it, They were flat and they were just waiting. Yeah, you're going to talk, you're going to talk, but we're going to wait for Sammy to talk. And that could also be that they are heels and everyone hates them too. But it was kind of it was an okay promo. I didn't hate it. It's coming from a promo guy. He didn't hate it, which is better than he says about most promos. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, as someone who's I'm like, I'm, this was awful. I'm like, yeah, I don't hate what that was. Their, their my skills are good. This the crowd was not. I think so, yeah. And I do love that Kevin Owens is at the point now, which is I don't care. Let's just fight him now. Yeah, I was bah! like, I was like, your face people. is ugly. Let me punch it. I was punch you in your face. Right punch him right in the face, Sammy. I think we should do that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I just love seeing the two of them together, just being friends in a backyard. Like it's perfect. <laughs> I'm hoping they don't do the normal Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, their friends, and then the, which one of them portrays each other. Uh, yes, we saw that how many times already? Didn't they already yeah. do that? Three it did it like three or four, two, three or four times, yeah. like between this NXT and main me. roster. Yeah, yeah. They've been, so this, but they've been best friends since like ROH days, the El yeah. Generico days. <laughs> so I feel like they, this might be finally their time to be like fine while ago they're like we'll do one last heel turn against each other but we want to run for a while for x for these can we be friends and dominate for a little bit which i think they should i think it's hilarious <laughs> chemistry is um, incredible. then what happened and then we had this very strange roman reigns paul Heyman, go talk to him bit right in the plug let me place. okay i gotta talk about that i'm so tired of this full simplification that paul Heyman has for <laughs> roman reigns it's so weird I'm, I'm glad you brought that up i'm like i'm my tribal chief i love you my tribal it's chief. it's very homo erotic and i don't know how i feel about it does does paul Heyman do weird things to roman behind the scenes that we don't see what is this yes my tribal chief what? 
not to get us demonetized or everything. All good managers are good at the ski team. I wonder <laughs> what's happening with this character development and what they're trying to do. Because <laughs> Paul Heyman's kind of acted himself into a corner. He's so good at playing that Schadenfreude simp, yes, master character. And Roman is so good at being this hyper arrogant, I am the leader. It, when this bloodline thing is over, where do you go? What do you do? You, Paul you Heyman either sticks with Roman or he goes back to Brock Lesnar. Or crawls back to Brock. I miss yeah. you too, Brock. Yeah, whatever that has to be. I don't know. Like, Paul Heyman's kind of stuck. and Or Paul Heyman will disappear for a year and then come back and walk out there and go, My name! And the audience goes nuts and gets a pop. I, <laughs> It's weird. And it was even stranger later on at the end of the show when Paul Heyman's in the corner, like, shaking. And, and you crying. see his whole neck and face shaking and crying. He's all in. The Meisner's working. He's doing the method actor thing. It's perfect. But it's also a little out of place. Ah, okay. And the fact that Roman is oblivious to the fact that this large white man right next to him is fawning over him. I don't know. I think he knows, but remember that what wise Roman said, that's my wise man. Yeah, the whole thing. And then, and then Paul Heyman beaming about it. Like, ah. That's right. I'm his wise man. I don't know how I feel about it. I think you're right. I think it's such a broad storyline. I don't want to say, ah, maybe that's not the way I want to say this. How do I even decipher this articulately other than they've written themselves into a corner? I don't know where Paul Heyman goes. I don't know either, but this is like the 19th time we've got a Roman Reigns returns on SmackDown because right. he's gone for two weeks and returns like, I don't like the fact that he's only been champion for 1,020 days because he hasn't defended the belt since Mania. I think someone, there's a meme out there that's on Twitter, or it might be Blue Sky or one of the other socials that someone was talking about. Yeah, Roman Reigns, champion, 1,020 days. Been in the ring, 10. Okay, fair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's okay. why you're champion. We see you every now and then. The um, only person we see less than him is Brock Lesnar. But Brock is not holding a title right now, so right now I'm fine with it. We'll talk about this towards the end because I don't know how the rest of Money in the Bank is going to look in terms of matches because we only have four matches confirmed so far for this, and we'll talk about it later. But They're going to do what AEW just did, and then two days before, just match, match, here's what's happening. You know what? We'll do a we'll do a compare and contrast too, because the way that they're doing Forbidden Door yeah. versus Money in the Bank, like mm-hmm. it's a little different. Because, but we'll save our thoughts. We're on SmackDown right now. Sure. So after this really weird segment, which we'll get into in a little bit. Next up, we had a quick match. We had EO versus Zelina Vega. I saw this. I'm like, Zelina's gonna get pinned. It is what it is. I, oh, EO I size shot. ring gear was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I was very upset. This was a four minute match. I know. So and it was fire. It was moving. I was interested. They hated each other. They sold. It was great. I can watch Selena Vega all day. She has That's abs. What I was going to say. When your husband uh, is Malachi and knowing his workout regimen, you have to keep shoot. up. Yeah. I mean, it was all really good. Is Selena Vega just taking the 619 as her finisher? Because she hit that. The only person that's it was so clean. clean her was Ray. It was so like, that's clean. How clean. That 619 was. It makes sense because she is tiny, but she's like at the <laughs> right height. <laughs> they were both tiny, which is finally great because normally the last couple of women's matches I watched, like it's one really big woman and a tiny woman. <laughs> they were great. I thought they, they were, were flying tiny. everywhere. I thought they everything was sold beautifully. Oh, I wanted more tie. <laughs> and oh. they're. So this, the seeds of this was your only Bailey women's Bean. match on this episode of SmackDown, which made me upset. That was the other thing I was going to say. It's like, where is all the women? What happened? No one's there. I'm over Bailey interrupting the ref in the pin. We've seen it like, I don't know, five times in a row now. Isn't, Bailey trying yeah. to help and Bailey messing it up and Bailey getting in the way. The breakup is going to happen soon. <laughs> you can well, hear my... She was like, Bailey! Yeah, exactly. And the fact she cursed her out in Japanese was so great. Oh, so, so good. funny. Please, all, please do all the Japanese as someone who has family in Japan. Do all the Japanese. I'm here for it. I'm losing my suspension of disbelief. I don't believe it anymore. If you're in my faction and you mess up my matches five times in a row, me and my tag team partner, you're not in my faction anymore. And at some point, yelling at you in whatever language doesn't matter. You, I'm not. I'm starting not to believe it. And there should be. A, we need to see that story go somewhere. I'm starting to drown and tread water a little bit. Break them up, then. 
Have them fight I Bailey. Wonder, Make right, Bailey do I something. I they're doing that at uh, Money in the Bank because EO and Bailey are both in the match, correct? If I remember right. So I wonder if Bailey sure. wins on beats Shotzi. Sorry, John. And then at Money in the Bank, like they both go up for the briefcase and EO Sky, you know, does her awesome. I'm the queen of the sky. I'm gonna do awesome high flying Japanese moves from the top of a ladder onto Bailey. Quite possible. You just Vince McMahon yourself. That's probably where we're gonna go because we've seen this kind of happen. Here's the no, but it's a good. It's not Vince McMahon's decision. Vince McMahon had to say it. Omos would be doing it, but Omos, like, Omos is here. Omos puts Shotzi through the suitcase. It's over. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, it would be an Omos match. There's no ladders. It's just Omos. It's just standing Omos there. You would have to climb Omos. You have to climb Omos to get yeah. to the briefcase. Dad. And they're gonna call the King Kong match, but. <laughs> no, there's so many bad implications. Like the underlying racism in that name alone is really it's, bad. It's Vince McMahon. It's... Oh my god, Marcus. I'm laughing because that's what Vince would do. Like he right. would do. That's it. the only reason why I said that because I don't mean any ill intention. I said oh, that. I just say man. Vince McMahon. That's. Oh, so you guys think that Bailey's beating Shotzi and keeping her spot then in the Money in the Bank ladder match? Mini brings up a good point that I think it's going to be a t we'll see damage control break up officially over the money in the bank spot. Or it's going to be EO Sky is going to cost Bailey the match and then Bailey's going to flip out and break up the and the attack shot attack EO Sky next week. I One think Shotzi's going to get her get into the match. I want her to have a redemption because last year's money in the bank women's match. Across the board was really bad for everybody was just off, but I want a redemption for her because I know she's great. And I feel like we talked about this a year ago that Shotzi was that whole match hard to make it. Yeah, it was the whole thing was blah, but Shotzi was like might have been one of the few things that worked. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> it's actually funny. I'm speaking, speaking of Shotzi. We talked about her last week when we did our last like big Biconics podcast episode. I opened up Instagram and instantly saw a post of Shotzi. It was her Instagram. It was like, my phone's listening to me. It's listening to you. Yeah. So then it I knows. followed her. Yeah. But, you followed her. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to follow her. Like to dinner? Or no, is there... it's something like that. No, it was on Instagram. I wasn't following her before. It was like, people you might know. Oh, okay. Okay. Shotzi. I was like, I don't know her. We we're just talking about her. So my phone's listening to me. Shot Sassy on Instagram, and then I followed her to where she eats, and I know yeah. where she shops now. Like, don't say that on the topic. Anyway, Selena Vega, EO Sky, why was that a four-minute match? She should have been way better. Yeah. Uh, I do agree with you. I do think that we're going, there's damage control in Bailey and EO Sky, and all this has to go somewhere, and I think Money in the Bank is a perfect jumping-off point for where that has to go. And then we had this Grayson Walla thing. The Grayson I... Walla effect. <laughs> Grayson Walla effect. I don't Dislike Grayson Waller. I dislike these big talk show things. Ever since I was a kid, they drove me nuts. <laughs> Where it was this, let's do a segment. Like, it's a talk show thing. So I have to bite my tongue a little bit because this is now a part of wrestling universe is that we have these strange talk shows in the middle of everything. However, this was fan talking to simping. Grayson Waller totally going all in on the Charlotte Flair. I love what you. What was she wearing, by the way? By I'm gonna say the same thing. I'm gonna say the same thing about Bianca. But what was Charlotte it was a wearing? hi, the fashion guy here, right? So both Please of them tell me. Both of them were wearing. Both of them were wearing what I'm assuming are body suits. So a body, if you're not, if anyone who doesn't follow, who doesn't know fashion, a body suit is basically like a. It's like a one piece kind of thing where the purpose of a body suit it mostly just keeps bits and pieces in place. Specific, there's certain body suits that can accentuate curves to give make you look more curvy, and this is for both guys and girls. But mostly, I see a lot of women wear body suits. But say what you will about Charlotte, I'm always loving the fashion game. Usually, Charlotte doesn't miss when it comes to the fashion game, whether it's yeah, but she looked like she was wrapped in a 1970s couchapult street, like she didn't look like she. All I it needed was her to be like, to perfect time to take off the plastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then Bianca's was see through. This is true. I, I thought Bianca looked great. I was oh, looking at Charlotte. I was watching Charlotte Flair in her those heels, which were monster heels, if either of you saw, trying to walk down a ramp and then walk up steps into a ring. That got all my respect because she was like, "Ooh, it. please do not baby giraffe this. Please walk slowly and steady. You're gonna be just fine." So I was sitting there, I'm like, I noticed those heels after when her and Bianca were doing the face to face, and I was like. I thought Bianca was taller than this. Or Charlotte <laughs> this tall. No, those are heels. Yeah. I 
go ahead and then i'll give go ahead i'm just gonna say we're gonna do this we're gonna do the same bit for an hour we're just gonna talk over each other i think we're gonna say we're gonna i think we're saying the same thing go ahead mikey the first half when it was just grayson and charlotte like it wasn't clicking with me because you know for whatever reason i actually one of the few people that like the grayson waller effect granted again he did it a lot in nxt and it worked up because usually it was used to extend feuds create feuds or in the turn in the events of him versus johnny gargano at stand and deliver it was used as a vehicle to set that match up here it didn't really work because grayson was just being a schmoozer which is in his he like heel personality i just i have yeah before bianca came out in my head i had questions i was just like i had thoughts and questions my thoughts were the segment's not really working out for Grayson and Charlotte, they're trying their best, but the chemistry is not there. It's not clicking. And then the question I had, I was like, when are they going to let Grayson wrestle? <laughs> I was going <laughs> to, I almost asked this two weeks ago when we were talking on Biconics. I'm not, I don't think I've seen Grayson Waller wrestle. I've just seen highlights of a former wrestling career. So there was a part of me that just thought he was a promo guy, like he had retired and he just shows up in the ring. But apparently he wrestles. Apparently he can. He's really good at it too. I believe you. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I watched him like my only Jason Waller match. I watched live. It's great. That's I, fantastic. I believe you. His highlights are great. I don't know if I've seen him do anything. And I also felt like oh. this segment was way too short because granted it made perfect sense because it didn't go on too long because then Bianca came out and we'll talk about their her and Charlotte's interaction a little bit. But I, told, I, I mean, started with Jeff Hardy. I love when they come out and they're supposed to be doing like this walk to the ring and being all serious, but they come out and dance. And then they walk to the <laughs> ring. So it happened when Jeffy came out, was supposed to save somebody, but did his whole like thing and then ran to the ring and became a meme for the longest time. I saw <laughs> Bianca come out and I thought she was going to come out and just walk straight to the ring because she's like, serious, hey, you took my title off of Tony. F you. But she came up smiling, whipping her hair, doing the dancing. Then she walked down and said, F you, you took my title shot. And I was like, wait, what? I agree. I don't think, I think the segment was kind of meh until Bianca Belair showed up. I think Charlotte in, I felt to me like, yes, this was scripted, but they were trying to ad lib and make it real. And JVL can talk about this too. When you get sort of mediocre improvisation and it's just not clicking and you're not listening and you're more interested in what you're doing than what the other person's doing and you're doing everything wrong as far as improvisation goes, it's going to fall flat quickly. And then you just make angry faces at each other and go back to, I'm the champion, sort of trope stuff. Bianca Belair comes down to the ring, dances her way down to the ring, takes the mic away, and saves this segment, in our opinion. I think it's safe to say. Yeah, okay. we're seeing bits of the heel turn like you talked about, which I agree with. Is Are they trying to make Charlotte the face of this feud? Here's the problem. I think Charlotte has face potential, but the problem is that it's the same thing like, we just saw them trying to make Charlotte a face when she was in the feud with Rhea leading into WrestleMania, but that didn't sure. work out. Rhea's a heel, and Charlotte's but technically the face, but the crowd she's is not. so over with Rhea. She's like, so... when we were at WrestleMania Live, like, more people were cheering for Rhea and booing Charlotte when they yeah. were making their way down the ring. And it's... Yeah, Bianca saved the second half of the segment because in my opinion she was basically she's been, in her promo she literally was just telling charlotte exactly what the wwe universe and we wrestling fans were thinking about she's Absolutely. i promised my rematch yet you just get back here you're given this title opportunity and then charlotte's out of nowhere i never got one it's like you've had 14 titles and Sit down, white lady. I never got my rematch. Well, then don't fucking talk to Rhea. I, exactly. I loved, I really loved the fact she's, Bianca just pulled out everything and says, you've had 14 title reigns. I'm the longest reigning women's champion in the modern era. So put some respect on that. I was just like, mm -hmm. you know what? She's speaking facts right there. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to lose about 14 times. <laughs> Which was, that was such a. This proved, I was like, I need a Bianca heel turn. I want her to go back to her heel persona in NXT because it was this shit talker. There's a way that you could be a heel and be confident and not like a chicken shit confident heel. Like a chicken oh, yeah, shit confident. Yeah. LA Knight. Which we need to talk about. Which we will. <laughs> I, which we will. Yeah. I think that 
and because we could talk about this for hours and we have to get to the end. I would love to see a Bianca Belair heel turn. I have no problem with that, but I think it's going to turn into an LA Knight or a Rhea Ripley where, yeah, you're the heel, but we love you and you're over. And the WWE has a hard time handling that. They don't really know what to do or they write themselves into a corner. The Attitude Era kind of had a template that has been broken since. And I don't think anyone's his wrestlers are stuck in, hey, they love me anyway. I'm uh, fine. I'm your heel, but they're going to get mad. <laughs> you better put some more story behind it. Where are we? Okay. So more Paul Heyman no, shenanigans. <laughs> there's, there's more Paul Heyman simping sh- ski team shenanigans here. We jump into this AJ Styles carrying class Scarlet mention thing. Go was ahead. that built? Because that seemed really random to me. I was going to ask Mikey because I feel like I missed something. Out of nowhere, AJ Styles is feuding with Karrion Cross. There was a thing last <laughs> right. week where I was like, why is this happening? I know I didn't watch wrestling for a chunk of time, but in my head, I thought AJ Styles was a star, was huge. And now AJ's kind of treading water in the mid card fighting Karrion Cross. So let me tell you how this was built, right? It literally was built just on last week. <laughs> so here's what happened. So AJ, so last week on SmackDown, AJ had a match. I forgot who he mm-hmm. was facing. And at the end of said match, Scarlet comes out and then she blew like dust into AJ's yeah. face or whatever and blinded him. And so then it's, oh, mixed tag match. Because it it made no sense to throw Mia Yim into this because her and Scarlet really haven't had interacted. And... Again, because of the stupid brand split and how much it's messed everything up, I wanted a longer feud between Scarlet and Karrion versus Shinsuke because I was like, ooh, give me that. And then it was literally feud ended on the go home show before Backlash. And then they went their separate ways. I'm like, this is stupid. This match was all right. I'm surprised Karrion won. I believe he did need to win this match because Karrion's also floating around in the purgatory of the mid card. I'm trying to figure out why, how are we using AJ in this manner? I was excited that he has this whole faction, but this whole faction is not going to war with anybody at the moment. Like now the bloodline is crumbling and that's no, that ship has sailed. But I would have liked to see before that happened. You have, I don't know, faction versus faction warfare, but obviously I don't know what's happening right now. Smackdown is all over the place. (laughs) Push AJ's faction as heels and have him feud against the LW because the LW also isn't doing anything right now. Sure. Honestly, I would be here for that. But, <laughs> Good old fashioned white people, brown people. Yeah, go but, ahead. <laughs> AJ Styles versus Rey Mysterio is what I was thinking about. But. I think that AJ is, and is Styles Clash still a finisher or is that just a move now? Because I've seen five people kick out of it over the last two months. Usually the Styles Clash is his finisher. The other one is also the phenomenal forearm. And that big forearm off the... Yeah, and I don't know. I'm just a little confused. I don't want to say newbie, but right. after I'm like 18 months in and I'm There like, is oh. no finisher in WWE anymore. The only one we had close to that was the 1D. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, because like, and only someone, like one person has kicked out of that. And then that happened. I, uh, my favorite I part of the entire AJ Styles match was him going, I'm married, bitch. That's where we're going. So this is Scarlet trying to use her feminine powers on AJ to distract the AJ takes off the glove, which is huge because he wears gloves and yells, I'm married, bitch. And creating a new meme for the internet world. A funny statement. <laughs> and then she slapped the shit out of him. And that sounded painful. And he took it like a champ. He's good. AJ is really good at selling. He's still right. Karrion's finisher. Fucking great. Yeah. And he got hit with it. I was like, damn. I don't want to hate on Karrion Cross too much. I'll leave that for JVL. But I'm just C plus on Karrion. Okay. I don't know if they're misusing you or if you're just you're the, bored and you didn't make right. the hockey team. So now you're doing pro wrestling. Well, here's like, the thing. Happened? Like, I I enjoyed Karrion was in NXT, but since he's been called up to main roster, he's not great, but he's not horrible either. He's talented. He can wrestle. I have seen him on the yeah. independent scene, like his stuff in Impact or yet yeah, or TNA, as it was still called back in those days of the Dark Ages. He's good. <laughs> good ages. What do you mean? Here's oh, the thing. The TNA, the TNA ages when it was under Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff. And we don't, that's the era we don't talk about. We don't talk we don't about talk Aces about. and A era. 
Because then after that, then it went into the Jeff Jarrett owned era. And then we're in the Scott Demore era, which the Scott Demore era is great. You should listen to my impact review to see how great it is. But anyways, uh, <laughs> got to plug in all the shows. But uh, I don't know, man. I'm just trying to figure out what are we doing? And I want to see Scarlett actually wrestle because homegirl can wrestle. Stop using her as the valet. But it is what it is. She took some great bumps. I, I mean, you, there's a wrestler in there. I, again, I haven't seen it. After this match, we jumped into a Rey Mysterio segment, which was fine, which was him building up Escobar. Santos Escobar comes into the ring, and then Santos along Escobar comes... Santos Escobar being a simp to Rey. Fair. Not as big a simp as if you have a simp right. calculator. It's not. It's... It's... Like, but then we get LA Knight, who didn't say a word. He just came out, pushed Rey, match happens, gets and pins. So That was it. The crowd... Loving the fact that L.A. Knight shoved Rey Mysterio is crazy and creates a conundrum that I wanted to talk about. That's one of my things. L.A. Knight is so over as a heel. And there's, I don't know if you've heard, there's other YouTube channels, which I'm a fan of, and I like watching that are comparing him to The Rock. And it's a really fascinating comparison between L.A. Knight and The Rock and this. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but they make some interesting points. I can tell you how I feel about it. So here's the how thing. How do you feel? Tell me how you feel, Mike. <laughs> L.A. Knight is very charismatic. That is the strongest thing he has. And when he is allowed to wrestle, he is also a great worker. I have seen it both mm-hmm. in NXT and also in Impact. However, I don't think it's a fair comparison because you're comparing someone who's even though he's ha- L.A. Knight has had a long wrestling career, if you're looking at all the promotions he's been a part of, this is really his first stint in WWE. So he's fairly young in his WWE career. And I don't think it's fair to compare. He's not at the rock level yet. The rock has transcended into the stratosphere that is beyond just a wrestling superstar. He's just a superstar in general of life. L.A. Knight is very charismatic, but it's not a fair comparison because The Rock worked years and years in the company to get as over as he as L.A. Knight is charismatic, but he's I don't put him and The Rock on the same level. I think they're comparing this L.A. heel L.A. Knight to heel Rock in like the early 2000s, late 90s. Sure. When he was teaming with Vince, I would put that comparison. Sure. Because I think The Rock was just as over as L.A. Knight is as a heel. And I only bring that up as a talking point because I'm not a huge fan of, and this happens in sports a lot, where, oh, look at them, they're like a young, when they put Hall of Famer monikers on folks, and I think that just puts more pressure on the performer. Oh, they're mentioning me in the same sentence as, and no matter what, you're going to hear it, and it's going to be a psyche thing, and then that's not fair to do to someone. But like we're doing, if you're doing compare and contrast, yeah, maybe this type of character, this type of thing, and sports entertainment are fodder for that sort of stuff. I do see the charisma. I do see the ability to work and to sell and to help and to do heal or whatever. Again, what do you do with him? I win money what, in the bank. What do you do? Because you have this heel that everyone loves. And I don't know if you all saw this. They're cheering for LA Knight during the match. They're zooming they, in on the crowd cheer, going LA they, Knight. They cheered after he pushed Ray, who was the most wrestler of all time, and they're cheering for him. And they're cheering for him. So this is this echoes that sort of Bret Hart getting mad at Steve Austin and Americans being like, why do you like this guy? He's an asshole. We like him because he's an asshole. <laughs> there's, there's something really... Uh, I don't want to put the big descriptive words on it, but there's something really cool happening with LA Knight, and I hope someone sees it and does something with it. If it's a face turn the right way, but still keeps the attitude, if it's a even darker heel turn, I'm going to say this out loud, don't hate me. If there's some sort of Roman Reigns and LA Knight calls him out and we get a Roman LA Knight, something big to push LA Knight, because that would be cool as hell. And you might, you have a chance at a really good pay-per-view. I'm uh, didn't talk. I know. <laughs> he, didn't, he, didn't, LA didn't talk, he didn't know promo, nothing. That he was that upsetting. <laughs> He did all of that, and he didn't have to talk. Right. He was great. I just like to hear him talk, because he's incredible on the mic. Oh, he's fantastic. He's killer. I think he's he's currently the second best person on the mic in the active roster currently. Sure. Behind only The Miz. How about that? I And as far as, I still say that, and sorry to jump brands for you, I still think that MJF is the number one heel in professional wrestling right now. 
in my opinion, the way MGF is running that stuff. LA Knight is up there just for pure charisma and the ability to work. And like we said, to be over and not even talk in a match and shove Rey Mysterio. That's wild to me. Any for- thoughts about America's ass? <laughs> It's true though, I but I, that reminds me. I will talk about AEW more off air. I saw something with Collision. I thought it was hilarious. This was wild. I do. I am glad that Santos Escobar won. Absolutely. I do think that people of color and minority representation is still an issue. It's tough putting them up against LA Knight when everyone's over like that. So I, I think that's just tough. So I'm interested to see where LWO goes and that that's right. Moving. And then before we get into the main event segment, as I put this in air quotes, we all we usually always get the bumper of here's what's happening next week. So right. ne- so next week on SmackDown is going to be very interesting. You have the women's tag team unification match between Shayna and Ronda versus Isla Dawn and Alba Fire to unify the tag team championships. Ronda and Shayna are going to win. Hopefully they give it time, though, because Alba and Isla are great. We're also getting more NXT former matches. Baron Corbin's taking on Cameron Grimes to the moon. I love Cameron Grimes. He's great. And then, of course, Cameron, yeah, go Cameron ahead. Grimes seems, I don't know enough about Cameron Grimes. I, I didn't hate that interrupted promo. I'm just meh about Baron Corbin right now. We'll yeah. talk about it because I have questions because he's on SmackDown, but then he's going to be fighting in, in two weeks on NXT Gold Rush Night 2 against yeah. Carmelo Hayes. It's... We'll talk about that because on NXT, I'm like, oh, shit, we're actually getting a world heavyweight at, championship match on NXT. Look at you getting hot and bothered out of nowhere. Look at that, Mikey. <laughs> Lord. Here's the thing. I have lots of questions in <laughs> NXT. Booking decisions and storylines and characters sometimes never make sense. But when the back is against the wall, they have solid special TV show, weekly TV shows and their pay-per-views are uh, always excellent. And then, of course, Maybe. yeah. There's five or six people in charge, and at least there's one or two of them who know what they're doing. Everything else is kind of like throwing things at the wall and seeing what happens. And then, of course, lastly, that got announced for next week on SmackDown, Bailey versus Shotzi. And if Shotzi wins, she takes Bailey's spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Putting it out there, I would like to see that. So Shotzi gets a chance to redeem herself after last year's Money in the Break of debacle. But we shall see. All right. I would. I'm biased, but I would yeah. like to see that. Me too. I love Shotzi. She's great. Give me more tank. Main event time. This Use set- the tank. Make the tank your yes. finisher. <laughs> Wrap him up in the ropes and shoot him with the damn tank. There it is. It's over. Tank to the face. Maybe, maybe that's too much, but something. <laughs> or some sort of, yeah, put him in the rope and then, I don't know, do or, some sort of spear or something. <laughs> seat them in the corner and just do like a uh, Kevin Owens rolling cannonball into it. And just call the tank yes. Back. Load Shotzi into a cannon <laughs> and have someone just boom and it's a spear and she shot from the ramp into the ring. Bow! Shotzi do it though. That's it's, it's, she <laughs> would, but she'd be injured every other week with a shoulder injury. But she would though. She'd be like, you're throwing it in a cannon? Fuck yeah, let's go. Like, Shotzi, no, we need you to live. I know. Home. Listen, her independent days jumping off of the rafters and everything. I gotta send you, I don't know if you guys have seen that. If you've seen those videos of her like monkey bar climbing fluorescent bulbs and then letting them go to smash folks. Ah, demon. Incredible. This happened in this moment. Okay. So we build everything up until the end of SmackDown. Okay. Did either, I'll, I'll say this before I say anything else. Did either of you have an idea of where this was going to go? I knew the I knew what was gonna happen. You, you feel yeah. you knew. Yeah. Okay. Mikey, did you feel you knew? I had a feeling because I'm li- because we're two weeks away from money in the bank. And at this point, Roman hasn't M- Roman has been confirmed he will be at Money in the Bank, but we hadn't established what his match was going to be. My initial thought it was gonna be Jimmy versus Roman, and then we build to the tag team match at SummerSlam, but no. It, they progressed the storyline. They skipped over a step and we're jumping straight into the tag team match at Money in the Bank. But I had a feeling that we were going to get some sort of iteration in this match. I did not think they pulled the trigger right now for Jay to kick Roman and join Jimmy. And now, but we could talk about this as a segment. 
I had an inkling we were going to get something to set up money in the bank, but I, they skipped a step in my original plan that I thought they were going to do. So I was a little bit surprised, but I was like, I'm intrigued. But Honestly, now no, we'll see what happens. I thought they were going to milk it. I thought this was going to be 20 minutes and then it's unresolved. And then we don't know what happened. Cut to end of show. Or if it was going to be another Sammy saves Jimmy thing or some weird whatever just happened. I thought they were just going to string it out even more. Is this segment lasted, I don't know, 15, 12, 15 minutes. It was long. And there's a lot of breaths and pauses in between. So it's okay, where are we going? Jay hit um, us with that double plot twist. Sure. Yeah. Which I totally agree with. I love him turning around and yelling at his twin and then turning around and then what's interesting, and I failed. I had to go back and watch this. I was looking up something about the Usos. While he was on the rant. And I was like, I wonder, I used to have a question about this. And right as I looked up, I caught the, and I'm out too. Boom! And I was like, oh, what? I dropped my phone. I rewound it. I was like, <laughs> what just happened? Oh, it happened now. I was waiting for this. I thought I totally thought it was right. a kick, going to be a kick in the other direction. So let's put our theater hats on and let's dissect this segment sure. from beginning to end. So we begin this segment with Roman Reigns coming out. Of course, doing what he normally does, the acknowledge me and everything. Paul Heyman, Take Solo it. are in the ring. Ten minute walk to the ring. Yeah. Then we get Roman talking for a little bit and then Jay comes out. And then this is pinnacle gaslighting if I have ever seen it in my entire life. The whole entire show, like Paul Heyman was gaslighting him, the only person. And I'm so happy that. As Jay was coming out for this event, main event segment to start, him and Sami Zayn crossed paths once again in the back. They didn't have to I say learned, anything, I and it was glorious. Talk. I looked up at that, and I was like, do not talk. Say nothing. Just walk away. <laughs> yeah. I agree. It was beautiful. Roman runs down the list. Him and Paul Heyman are just like, bro, Jimmy is not it. Jimmy is this, Jimmy is that, and lo and behold, Jimmy Uso appears. No and music or anything, we're just here. Yo. I want, was that a mistake, or was that just him walking out of nowhere? I don't know. I liked it that he didn't come out to music. I was just like, he just popped out of nowhere. <laughs> I'm a fan of, and we've mentioned two or three moments already, this do less. If you're going to treat these performers like actors in these segments, do less. Make it more cinematic lean on that moment like the Sami Zayn and Jimmy walking past each other in silence do it do more bits like that don't do them as throwaways make us sit in it and watch and that's going to speak way more but yeah I wish the camera was on Jay as Jay appeared all of a sudden we're on Roman and it's a yo nothing and then all of a sudden he's in the ring you had a whole you could have really manipulated us and told a story with that and so then both Usos are on one side. You have Roman Solo and Paul on the other. Roman continues to run down to Jay be like, yeah, Jimmy didn't. Then he hits him with who is the only one against you being a part of this? Your brother. And then Jay brings up their personal like bits and pieces of their personal lives that may not be public knowledge. It's like Mr. Prom King, Mr. Likely to succeed. It was just like, you know what? He just ran through. I was like, oh, I was like, OK, so Jay is going to pick Roman. <laughs> Start calling him Joshua and everything, too. When yeah. he hit him with the Joshua, I'm like, "Ooh, <laughs> I get a kick when wrestlers use their actual government names to be like, nah, bro. <laughs> I thought it was again. I was looking up an Uso thing, partly because I was falling into the family tree rabbit hole. But partly there was something else I wanted to find. You're right. Right at that rant. I was like, oh, no, they're going to do exactly what I think. They're all going to jump on Jay. All hell is going to break loose. Someone's going to save Jay. And then something's going to. Okay. And then all of a sudden that. I'm out too. Bam. Oh my God. That's gorgeous. And then all hell broke loose. Because as soon as Jay kicked Roman. Solo just turns. And then he gets a double kicked by the Usos. And then they kick Roman again. Paul Heyman is. The yes. the hell out of that kick. So good. Paul Heyman's in the corner, like being weird about it, crying. I'm just like, all right, then 
And I was like, OK, so next week they're going to tell us that we're getting something at Money in the Bank between them. I was like, OK, they're going to they're going to let the weekend go through. They're going to make everybody sit on it. Not even not even 12 hours after SmackDown finished airing yeah. is when I sent you guys that picture. It'd be like WWE uh -huh. just officially announced it. It's a bloodline civil war tag team match at Money in the Bank. I was like, damn, I thought we were getting this match at SummerSlam, but all right. And then I was excited. And then I thought about it. I was like, OK. Solo's getting pinned in this one because I think the Usos have to go over here to continue that and just Roman yeah. Reigns just losing his absolute gourd over everything well, and just be more or paranoid. Or they're going to Vince McMahon you and they're going to have him smash the Usos and then they're going to do some sort of strange ritual thing. And maybe their dad comes to save him because Rikishi was all over Twitter and has apparently been hinting at a return. And for an old 90s head like me, I was laughing and like half crying please show up throw roman into the turnbuckle and just ass face him please that would make my return to the last wrestling so glorious i if, if, for those of you who don't know what i'm talking about rikishi jumped on twitter not too long after smackdown and to quote directly he said too much for tv to handle the views would go off the charts you already know hinting at possibly might be there at some point, because those are his children's. Oh, that I would be so cool. Posted four minutes ago. Logan Paul's coming back to Raw well, tomorrow. Uh, don't remind me. Why you gotta bring me down after talking about <laughs> something so cool? We'll uh, say well, that. So cool yeah. Here's a cool thing: a WWE Super Show house show last night. They did a Ray versus Roman Reigns match, and Solo came out to hit Ray with the small spike. The Usos came out. I proceeded to super kick walk solo back to the ramp. Like they just kicked him, then the other one would kick him, and then the other one would kick him, and then the other one would kick him. But they came out and interfered during a Roman Reigns match yesterday. Oh, during a house show? Yeah. Wow. That's cool. It makes me mad that they don't make the house show things canon because that's some fun stuff. I wonder how you even get to see those. Like, where do you. Do you somebody posts. Uh, no, uh, you, yeah, you can take a phone, but if somebody posted a video that they took. I'll go to a house show and just watch them be themselves and cause their trouble. That'd be amazing. The video of Kofi Kingston twerking against Solo was one of the funniest <laughs> things I have ever seen in the recent last couple, like the last year or so. But it was just posted in a style of a trail if you deserved it. So I'm I'm reading a thread here about everyone who's tuning into the bloodline and have thoughts like old heads and other pro wrestling folks that are talking about it. Bischoff has some comments about how good it's been. Rikishi, obviously there's a few others here. I'm, I really want to know where it goes. Cause a year ago I was like, this bloodline thing is dumb. And now 12 months later, I'm like, this is, this worked. I watched where are we going? I will agree. I think the bloodline storyline has probably been the best long term storytelling that WWE has done within the last couple of years or so. But for me personally, and this might be a personal bias, but I start it's starting to wear out its welcome once Roman beat Cody at WrestleMania and then we just kept on going. Now that we've right. added this dimension with the Civil War, with the fractures being complete, and now we have two distinct sides in this storyline, I'm just but then it help, it hurt it like I'm excited, but then it also makes me worry, too. I'm like, OK, so how does this look? Because after Bunny in the Bank, the next like the way that we break up the year into four different parts, the summer officially ends for WWE at SummerSlam. So Money in the Bank is in two weeks at the beginning of July, and then they have about four weeks until SummerSlam, which is that first Saturday of august my biggest worry is once we're done with money in the bank who do you build up to face roman at SummerSlam? rikishi and the usos versus roman reigns solo sokoa and i don't know who <laughs> paul Heyman. oh my paul Heyman. god put paul Heyman through a table as him into dust. as funny as brock lesnar used him as a weapon at that last man standing match at last year's SummerSlam. But that's my biggest worry is because Roman's not going to defend the title at. I don't know if he will defend the title at SummerSlam. He will be at SummerSlam, but whether it's a championship match, who knows? Because right now, right. for Money in the Bank, we got that match will probably be main eventing. Or it, who knows? Maybe the men's Money in the Bank match will main event Money in the Bank. Who knows? But it's so weird because Money in the Bank right now only has a few matches confirmed. We have that Civil War Bloodline tag team match. We have the men's Money in 
the bank ladder match, which I'm excited for all the participants. And I want to get on my soapbox real quick. All the haters that are saying, oh, there's no star power. I'm like, good. This is the first money in the bank in the wild where none of these people are former world main roster champions. These are all wow. people who have yet to win the big titles on main roster. And it's going to be fire because you have Ricochet, Shinsuke, Butch, you have LA Knight. It's oh, I'm excited for that match. Then you also have the women's money in the bank where on Monday Night Raw, even though this is not the Raw podcast, me and Minnie will cover it. The last spot mm -hmm. is going to be between Raquel Rodriguez and Trish Stratus. Which I'm like, so, okay. Carl's gonna limp as Becky's gonna cost Trish watch. Yep. So and then they're gonna like cost her. It, oh, they're then they're gonna cost her money in the bank. Yeah. The SmackDown was a good idea where we all SmackDown gave us an idea of where we're going. We think, which is great fodder. But we got to get to the end goal of this. Now that we've right. tied up all these loose ends, and now we've final thoughts on this week's final SmackDown. This. If you wanna, what would you grade this? Would you grade it? 10 out of 10 or A, C, B, D or... Let's do 5 because I, I, I think... Five out of six. Or six. Let's... 10? <laughs> really? I said 5 or 6. Out of, uh, Let's rate many? out of 5 because I think 5 is fair. <laughs> no, I said 5 minis out of 6. <laughs> All right. So here's the scale. Let's rate this out of a scale of 5. Whatever, whether that be 5 minis, 5 stars, 5 what in the world emojis. Like... So mini is the caliber of the SmackDown section. So five out of five minis, ah, it's a solid three, three point four minis. It's a good. I watched it. I enjoyed it. The promos had some moments that I enjoyed, and but needed to be saved. To me, if you're five, you don't need saving. The matches are fun. I watched. Again, if I was watching live, I don't know if I made it. Would have made it all the way through, which is a test of the market itself. I would have stayed to the end probably or come back to see how this bloodline thing ends without the bloodline feud in there. This is a high two, low three for sure. But the bloodline thing, seeing where that's going, seeing the potential of where that's going. Yeah. Like 3.4 minis doing leg day. So it's a 3.5. It's a little bigger today. Speaking of, yeah. Speaking of leg, bigger, just enough. All right. Speaking <laughs> of leg day, mini, what do you give your final rating? I'll give it. Same as John, 3.5. Sounds about right. So, Entertaining, yeah. Not. Wow. What are you going to do, Mikey? Drop the hammer. What is it? I'm going... So, so, my final thoughts. Bloodline segment definitely carried the, the rest of SmackDown. Because without that, look, objectively looking at it, I'm going to give it like a solid... I'm just going to give it like a solid... And this is not fair, but Ooh, you, you're going to say two. I'm going to give it a, like a two point without the bloodline segment. It would I give it a, a two point five. But because of the bloodline segment, I give it like a two point seven five because I have to be objective. Now, I'm being a little graceful. So a three might be fair for this. But I mean, once money in the Amer bank. is Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> America's ass was in this. You got to give it a three. <laughs> Listen. How I feel about that. I have to be objective as best as I can. I thought it was this show was still entertaining. This show was definitely entertaining and it did have its moments. But I and I know we're building towards money in the bank. So everything is getting shuffled around. But after money in the bank, I'm going to be a little harsher because now we're building towards the, one of the big four pay-per-views of WWE's calendar, which is SummerSlam. So I'm going to be watching closely post Money in the Bank to see how SmackDown builds their stories for the big summer show. But overall, for this week, since we're building Money in the Bank, solid 2.5 to 3 stars, I think is fair. I was entertained. It's just that nothing, nothing popped outside of why that segment. I agree. Mm -hmm. It's what we're in those low threes. We've talked about this on other podcasts too. We're in that four or five week lull before the go home shows where it's really hard to write and get any momentum for anything because we're in the in between watching and seeing where we want stuff to go. Great. At risk of talking for another hour. Thank you, Mikey. Thank you, Minnie, for being here. And thank you all for listening to the Vibe Tribe Biconics podcast. Smackdown review for 616 from the other night, heading towards Money in the Bank. 
We have a hundred different socials. Mikey's going to tell you all the rundown of those because I don't know where we're at now. We have so <laughs> damn many of them. <laughs> you can follow all of us. We are underneath the umbrella of Vibe Tribe Productions, but Viconics has also been doing its own thing. So if you want to follow just the wrestling content that we do specifically, you can follow us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, all over the internets at Biconics Wrestling Podcast, where all your favorite social media apps are being used, where you can see all the other things we do besides these reviews. You can see us try to review each weekly television show in under five minutes. We haven't succeeded yet so far. We try. You can also see our hot tag series right, where we, we give you short yeah. two to three bite sized minutes of wrestling news by Adolfo, who has been doing a great job with all of those. Check out and, the hot tags, they're great. Yeah, the hot tags are great. These beat the clocks are fun. The long form reviews are great. You can all we also have one pay-per-view review where you can see me epically try to condense a pay-per-view in 10 minutes, which we're gonna continue to do. But you can also make sure that you give us a like, a follow on the social medias, and a subscribe here to the Biconics Wrestling YouTube page to stay up oh, to date right. on all these things because our faces are on the YouTubes now. We're you YouTube have to do stars. That, that Come and subscribe and smash that like button. Be sure you got the bell on. We have to do all that stuff now, don't we? Yeah. Oh, yep. man. Yep. We can do that. All that stuff. But guys, come on. It's the Biconics. You know what I'm saying? It's the beat. Iconics. Yeah. <laughs> and on that lovely note, thank you so much for tuning in to the long form edition of the Beat the Clock Smackdown review for the week, for the week of June 16, 2023. Until the next week's episode, we'll see you then. But until then, adios.